question two. Now in question two, students are being asked to construct a contingency table to explore the relationship between two data items, um, which is listed in the spreadsheets. In this demo, the two data items are employee department and factors of motivation. Basically, the intention is to explore if there is any discernible relationship between employee department and factors that motivate them to work harder. To do this, for a contingency table to be constructed, we need to identify which of the data items should be the column and which one should be the row. The question highlight or defined the columns and the row. So students don't need to be worried about thinking which one should be the row and which one should be the column. In this case, our column is the employee's department, whereas the row refers to the factors of motivation. That's our role. So the next thing is we are also being asked to transform the count into a percentage based on column totals. Student has been taught how to do these transformations and, and the reasons for doing them. So we begin our contingency table by again highlighting or clicking on anywhere we have our data. You don't want to click, click on a blank spot. Otherwise, Excel may not recognize or reference that data. So we need to click anywhere the data sit, anywhere that the data sit. So with that done, we move to insert. We go to the mini bar, click on insert and click on the first icon, which is the pivot table. And you notice that the line, the moving line show up again. This indicates that in fact, Excel has recognized and referenced this data as the source of your information for analysis. And this is shown right here in this box, reference box. The next thing to do is to click on existing worksheets. Again, you want to really tie your report or your results on the same worksheet as your data. So you don't need to have Excel create a new worksheet. Otherwise, it will be difficult to go back and forth trying to relate the two, the, your data with the results. So you click on existing worksheets and then click on the location. Your Excel is asking you which location you want to place the report template. So you click, you, you make sure the cursor in the location box is blinking. This is quite important. As it blinks, then you moved around and select the location where you want to place your results. So I'm just going to place it right here. It gives me a reference point where Excel identified a reference point where I would like to locate my report. And that's it. Click OK. And then that's it. It identifies the area where this report is going to be built and it shows you the pivot table fields that you are going to use to construct this report. It's identified right in this segment the two data lists that you are interested in, the employees department and factors of motivation. Those are listed right here. One of these is your column, the other is your row. So here we go, the column and the row. The employee's department is the column. So that's the employee department goes to the column section. Factors of motivation is my row that goes to the row section. So my table 
contingency table will look like that. We have the roles, which shows the factors of motivations, and the columns, which shows the employee department. We have three employees department. Now the last segment on the pivot table field is the values. Now we need to ask Excel to count how many cases falls under each cell. So we pick any one of these. It doesn't matter which one you pick. Your results will always be the same. So I'm going to pick any one. I'll pick the employee department and place it in the values. The value is what count the number of cases. So here I go, I get my values. With the values, I need to make it center them to make it look a little bit more nicer. So I'm highlighting everything and going to home and click on the center your content button. Click on that and everything looks centered. Right? Now, the next thing we, we are being asked to do is to transform this count into a percentage. As it stands now, they just reflect the frequency count. So we have four employees from the administration, which indicate promotion. We have five employees from administration who are motivated by more vacation. We have nine employees from the maintenance department who are motivated by salary. So that's basically this, what this, this is what this count is telling you. Now we need to transform this into a percentage based on column totals. So we have, these are the column totals. And what that means is for each column, we transform the count into a percentage by dividing the count by their corresponding column totals. So four should be divided by 14, 3 divided by 14, 5 divided by 14, and 2 by 14. And we do that for each of the columns. Excel will, that, will do that for us. So we're going to have that done. So to do this, we right mouse click on any value. Right mouse click and say show values as percentage of column totals. Now we do have percentage of row totals. We do also have percentage of grand total. But the question is asking you to do percentage based on column total. So we click on that and here we go. It tells you clearly what the percentages are. Now this is your contingency table. This is where your work as an instructor ends. You've shown student the mechanics, the procedure of creating a contingency table. Now it's up to the student to go ahead and look at their data set and write some comment as to whether there is any relationship between the two data elements. For example, when it comes to administration, those who work in administration, the highest value is 35%. So 35% of the workers in administration prefer vacation, which is the most. With maintenance department, you have 45 the highest point is 45%. So 45% of the maintenance staff prefer are motivated by salary. For production department, the highest point is you have, in fact, two highest point. So I'm going to. So that indicates that somehow there's a possible relationship between the employee's department and factors that motivate them. In that administration, there are different reasons why they are being motivated. Administration have vacation, maintenance have salary, production has flexible work hours and salary as well. So again, there's no right or wrong answer to this comment. Basic student just need to communicate what they see. Have they, is there any discernible pattern? Can they see any trend? Is there any relationship? They just have to put down two or three comments, anything that they see that sort of jump out from the table, the contingency table. 
So they have to highlight that. 